Hi guys, Squirrel here, and welcome to another episode of our Balkan bush trip. And the last episode, we flew from uh, Castella to Singe. Singe was this little grass thing next to the east of a town. What they didn't quite show you because they hid it here was there's actually, you can just see it there, there's actually an athletic running track, which would have made identification a lot easier had they not hid it behind this menu. But anyway, in this one, that was quite a short journey, 10 minutes. In this one, we're going to be taking a longer journey. So we're going to be going from Singe to Mostar. And Mostar looks like a quite a big tarmac runway that sits uh, in a town in, in a valley, basically, by the look of it. So hopefully this should be a nice trip. So let's jump in there and uh, get on the runway and go flying. Okay, here we are on the runway. I've, I've spun us round so that we're facing east. Uh, so we're taking off into the sun. And it says here, as you take off from Singe Airfield, set your sights southeast, cross the waters of Katina River before crossing the tributary, tributary of the Katina, the Ruda River. Head a short distance further southeast to an asphalt triangle where the road meets larger state road D220. So there's a bunch of like tributaries and stuff here. The initial heading is 134, so I've put the heading bug on 134. We're almost a thousand foot elevation, so I've set the altitude to, two, uh, to three thousand, so we're two thousand foot above um, ground height, roughly. But there's a lot of hills around here, so we'll have to be ready to climb. Uh, so what I'm proposing we're going to do is take off, and we'll immediately start the timer and turn onto a heading of one three four as we're climbing, and look for two minutes twenty two. What we're looking for is an asphalt triangle uh, where the road meets a larger state road. So that's that's going to be the key. And when we get that, we're going to turn on a heading of 109er. So from the roadway triangle, head southeast along the D220. Soon you will pass the small hamlet of Tarabnik. Uh, continue in the same direction and you'll quickly come to another village of Gornia Tiarika or something. Let's just um, collapse that and we'll take off and climb on a heading of 134. Let's collapse that one. Uh, let's go... Park brake, all throttle. Uh, we'll start the timer now. Two minutes twenty-two. We'll start the timer now, but we may be prepared to allow a bit more time because I don't know if the two minutes twenty-two actually allows for um, climbing. I'm also noticing the GPS is pointing completely. Oh, there you go. I was going to say the GPS is pointing a completely different way to what we're supposed to be heading. Which is slightly confusing me then. Right, there's the climbing turn. We need to get some altitude fairly quickly so we can spot these uh, landmarks. Let's get the nose down. Try and get a little bit more speed. What about 80 knots for the best climb? See the flight director is trying to tell us the same thing. Come on, trim. I want a trim wheel so bad, <laughs> like a proper trim wheel. Right, let's go autopilot. That's done heading. Uh, we'll turn the heading bug to the right slightly and start to look out the window. That could be the state road. There's a river there. Let me just open that up. Take off, set your sights southeast, cross the waters of the river before crossing the tributary of Katina. The short distance further to the asphalt triangle where the, the, the road meets the largest state road D220. So that's what we're looking for. Let's just keep that there for a second. Almost on the uh, on the profile. back slightly and climb a little bit quicker Got a bit more performance we can get out of this thing right two minutes 20 it says um, 222 so we should be fairly close to what we're trying to achieve I do see something off the nose though which I think is probably just here I think this is probably what it's talking about so we'll just reset the timer for a second because I think we're um, it's not allowed us to climb, basically. 
So the next heading will be 109, which is a left turn following. Head southeast along the D220, and soon you will pass the Tamlet of Tallabnick. Okay, we're coming up onto 3000 now. Let's have a look at external camp. So there's a big state road here, there's a triangle here, this has got to be it. This has got to be what it was talking about. So 109, it will be the new heading. Well, that's correct. I think this is the state road it's talking about. Uh, from the Robert Triangle, head southeast along D20, soon you'll pass the small town of Tabernick. I think we may have to climb uh, here, is what I'm thinking. Let's go up another thousand feet. I've seen some pretty, pretty big hills. Tabernick, continue the same direction. You quickly come to another village of Gorner Tabernick. Chipped around a little bit. That's definitely the state road he's talking about. So I think we should have gone a little bit further before we turn left, and that's why we're slightly off track now. Do you know, I didn't know if there were wind turbines or a, a cable car system, but it's definitely wind turbines. Okay, 4,000, good altitude. Right, we'll turn back on heading of 109er. That should put us more or less back on profile. 1 minute 22. Okay, yeah, we're clear of those uh, wind turbines. So we're looking for... Scroll this down. We're looking for um, another village. So we're looking for a hamlet of Tanabnik, followed by Gorna uh, to Jerika, which should come up in. Actually, I just thought I should collapse in these. Four minutes twenty-one. So it's going to be a lot further ahead down the road here, somewhere down there possibly. And then we'll be turning on to 094, which is almost an easterly heading, which takes us that way. It says, as the road starts bending farther northeast, it will eventually come back to a fork. Take the eastern route. Soon you will see the road bend back on itself near the village of Azano. But you should continue heading east over the valley ahead and pick up a small road running directly toward the mountains. Follow it to the small sparse village of Velika Vinica. Ooh, this is quite a involved one, blimey. Okay, let's back off into cruise power now. We've got a good altitude, so we should be clear of most of the hills, unless it has to stick over any of the big ones. Let's just get a little bit back on profile. I, I think this is possibly the hamlet here that it's talking about. The smaller hamlet of Tarab Tarabernick. Continue the same direction, you quickly come to another village, Gorna Tillerica. So that's my current best guess. So this is the hamlet, and then maybe that's the town though. It's a rather nice scenery around here. Flying around Canada yesterday in a group flight, and um, it's very similar to this, although Canada had a lot more water valleys where I was flying, but it was, you know, a lot like this. Just incredibly pretty. That's definitely the hamlet. So I'm thinking either that's the town there, or that's the town there, or maybe this. So maybe all of this actually is the town. So after that, 421, that, that, that would tie in with the timings. So after that, it goes 094 and follow, I think, that road. 
the road starts bending farther northeast. It will eventually come to a fork. So I think that's what it's doing, it's going northeast. Maybe that's a fork there. Sinuously, the road went back on itself to the village of Hazano, but you should continue heading east over the valley. Over the valley would be that way. I'm pretty convinced this is the village here, so the timing's slightly off, but they usually are. Alright, let's pause that. And we're going to be going for 094. So 094, and start the timer. Collapse that one. Now there's a fork in the road there, but I don't know if that's the one it means. I, I think maybe it means a bigger one. Continue east over the valley ahead. Pick up a small road running directly toward the mountains. I take it that's the mountains, not that. So it could mean that road there, possibly. Or maybe that road. Is it stuck? Like the next heading is 139, and 139 takes us approximately that way. By the time we get there, it might be that way. Continue we sort of out ahead and pick a small road running directly towards the mountains. Well, there's definitely nothing here. Slightly off profile. Yeah, I think uh, it does say the road carries on northeast, which is that way. It's such like, when, you, when you're in surrounded by mountains like this, a turn like this, continue the road heading east over the valley, pick up a small road running directly towards the mountains. Like, pretty much every road goes towards the mountains around here. Right, this is the junction, zero, uh, 139er, which is definitely that road there. South of Vileka Venice is a larger intersection with roads leading southeast and southwest. Follow the southeastern path a short distance and should soon see in the glistening waters of Rechichi. Okay. If you say so. <laughs> right, let's turn right. On a heading of one three nine, let's collapse that. Reset. Start the timer. Glistening waters of Achichi. Make your way over the lake, heading towards the canyon on the southeastern side. Okay, so there's a lake here, which is that there, there's the glistening waters, okay we found that, make way over the lake heading towards the canyon on the southeastern shoreline, just got to be that, unless it means this canyon. And it's 55 we're looking for. Then after that, we turn in a slight left onto 126. Follow the road running into the hills as it passes, as it pats uh, southeast, passing the sinkhole 
of Yezero, also known as the Red Lake, and the nearby Blue Lake called Modro Yezero. <laughs> After a short time flying southeast, look for the hillside of Imotsky, situated on the Bayakova Massif. Jeez, man, this this uh, language. <laughs> That is glistening, that is rather nice, look at that. That is that is really cool little lake. The colours of it. Okay, so next heading, given we're about to overfly this thing. Make your way over the lake and then towards the canyon on the southeast shoreline. Next heading will be 126. Which is a very small course correction. So yeah, I think it wants us to follow this canyon here. Effectively. It's minutes 55 it reckoned. Mind you, it did tell us to go over. Make your way over the lake, heading towards the canyon on the southeastern shoreline. So I don't think we're meant to turn just yet. That is a canyon, look at that. Blimey. Okay, right, so we go one, two, six. Get rid of that. Reset, start the timer. So this leg we're on two minutes fifteen. Following the running from the road running into the hills, it passes southeast, past the sinkhole of zero. Sinkhole, okay. Blimey. Step back on course correction slightly. Also known as the Red Lake and the nearby Blue Lake. For a short time, fly southeast and look for the hillside town of Imotsky situated on the... So that's got to be the hillside town, I reckon, at the... Yep, pretty certain that's the hillside town. Then it says after that we will turn on to 115, running from Imotsky track the route past the roadside communities and along the agricultural plain. Eventually the road will lead to another town of Grud. So that's that way, I think. Well, there's one of the sinkhole lakes. I don't know if that's red or blue. Man, this looks like proper fertile farmland with that river running through it, blimey. 136, looking for 215. You can actually see underneath the sat nav bar. You can actually see the two lakes. There you go. One's here and one's here. Cool. About to pass over the town. There you go, that's Inotsky. So we're going to left turn onto 115 and then reset the timer. That's 115. Reset. Start the timer. Good stuff. Yeah, so right. Uh, let's get rid of that. We're in southeast, track the route past the roadside communities. This is 4 minutes 28, eventually the road will lead you to another town of Groot. So there is the road. It's quite a long road. I mean, this is a massive valley, look at this. Huge farming valley. It's 
Let's follow all the way down here. And then when we get to that one, the road will lead us to another town called Groove. So we're looking for a town called Groove. Uh, adjust east from Groove and follow the heading across the hills. It will take you across the Ugrovaca River to the next town, Soroki Bridge. I don't speak Balkan, as you may have noticed. Right, 4 minutes 28. Let's have a look at some scenery while we're here. It's lovely, isn't it? That was my phone randomly going off with an alarm. <laughs> Phones don't respect when you're recording videos. I just remembered, I just remembered what the uh, alarm was for. I'm baking some bread. <laughs> and I meant to take it out in about five minutes. Rip. <laughs> I just have to hope Mrs. Squirrel sees, sees the fact that uh, there's a beeper going off in the kitchen and uh, turns the, uh, the bread machine off. Right, four minutes 28. In case you're wondering what kind of bread it is, it's like a a seed bread, it's quite nice, really nice. Oh man, this is so pretty around here, look at What an epic place to live. I think this valley is probably the, the prettiest valley I've seen so far in the Balkans. This is gorgeous. And everybody just seems to have like a massive plot of land. Absolutely stunning. Now, ahead here, kind of looks like there's going to be a town. So I'm kind of thinking that's the town we're looking for. Grood. There's another road coming in. There's roads coming in all directions here. So let's say that's Grood. Then we go on a 084, which takes us easterly that way. Just east from Grood, follow the heading across the hills. It will take you across the uh, the river to the next town. Okay. So if you look on the map here, there is a river. So yeah, if we headed east from here, that would make a lot of sense. Pretty convinced this is the town we're looking for. Four minutes, almost on the time. Yeah, that's definitely true. Okay, let's reset the timer and we'll turn on to a heading of. Let's collapse that and we'll turn on to a heading of 084. There is 084, we'll start the timer, and we're looking for 3 minutes 45, there's the river. Take you across the river to the next town of Rejeg. So there'll be a town down there somewhere. I'm quite happy it went 4,000 feet, it's, it's kept us out of all the uh, problems with the hills. Uh, track with the road. So hang on, it's going to go to the next town of Rujeg. Track of the road as it meanders past several small villages towards the hillside settlement of Polog. And that will be on a 110. So I think we're going this way. We're going to find the next town, then head that way a little bit. 
And then after that, oh, we're pretty close to the airfield, actually. Uh, continue along the road, it will quickly lead you to the major city, major city of Mostar, named after the medieval guards who kept watch over the old bridge that spans the Neretva River. Find the river as you skirt around the mountains on the city's southern side and follow the waters towards your destination, Mostar International. Wow, okay. Going into a big boy airport. The thing is about this area though, like, it's beautiful, but I, I could see you getting lost here, you know? In every direction, it's kind of the same. It's like green hills and plains and rivers. You could quite easily get spatially disoriented here, I think. tracking that looks like the town we're looking for there's the international airport so yeah we are tracking along this river basically that's what it's effectively getting us to do like if I was planning this you know VFR flight on a map I would definitely more look to take the river lines or massive roads like, cutting across like this, it's doable, I guess, but... Looking at it, yeah. I just wish they'd give you elevation data, that's the only thing that's missing from this whole bush trip thing. It's... You know, there's no... Just put some peaks on here, or put some contour lines or something with, with data points, with numbers. That's what's missing. Because if you're flying it for real, you'd be looking at that. You'd be looking at that stuff. And you'd also need to know the airport elevation. Which is important when you're coming in. And it just doesn't tell you. you scroll down here. Like, why doesn't it say Mostar Airport? 657 foot elevation, or whatever it is. Is that sun actually rising as we do this? I think it is. It feels like it's higher than it was when we started this bush trip. I think it is actually rising. Oh, nice. Look at this. Better get ready to turn, aren't we? 3 minutes 40, 343, so we'll collapse that. Next heading will be 084, so we'll reset the timer. And turn onto a heading of 084. Start the timer. No, 110. What am I talking about? I collapsed the wrong one. Get rid of that. Track the roads and meanders past several small towns. 110. There we go. Yeah, well, basically, it didn't feel right turning left there because I knew for a fact we were going to follow this river. Now, I'm thinking we better start descending a bit here, so let's knock a thousand feet off. Otherwise we're going to be a little bit too much energy to get rid of later. What on earth is that? It's definitely sunnier here than it was when we set out. The mist has like burned away and you can see so much more in the light now. I don't know what time of year it's been set in. The thing is about this sim, right? You can fly a route like this, and then if you fly it at a different time of day, or at most especially a different time of year, you'll have a very, very different experience. Sim, it's 28. Now, the airfield should be... This river comes down this way, and then it's going to take us on a heading of 118, which is a bit weird, because 
118 actually takes you on a direct vector to the airfield. But actually what you want to do is stay on 110 and just go straight in. I think. see an international airfield is it down that valley or something I reckon it is went on the picture it was down in the valley wasn't it it's not showing you on that one but it definitely was in the valley yeah so now it wants me to turn right onto a heading something weird with this interface, it keeps collapsing the wrong one. Either that one being a bit stupid. So it's basically here, but we can't see it because there's a massive valley ridge coming up. I think we should probably lose some altitude as well. Right then, let's get ready for the uh, for the landing. Pretty much get rid of that now. So I think the best thing to do is we're just going to overfly it, and then we'll probably loop back make a right hand pattern in seems like the most sensible thing still not fully visual with this thing oh hang on is this it's not it, the problem is it's not really drawing it yet oh there it is I'm looking at the wrong place there it is the back I was looking at this thinking is it going to draw the, the runway but it's actually there Right, so I think what we'll do is we'll cancel the autopilot and we'll just descend quite a bit of energy so that we see it, so we'll just descend down, keep left. So you've got to kind of get down and then get the flaps in, but you can't get the flaps in until you've got down to the uh, speed that you want. And right now I don't know what the elevation of the airfield is, so I'm going to have to guess at what altitude to go at. Let's go with that. I reckon it's about 400 elevation, maybe. Let's get one stage of flaps in. Good thing is, it's a massive airport. Wow, this village just built into a valley. This is nuts. This is a crazy place to live. Like crazy in a good way. Right, we've got 20 degrees at the moment. Just need to get it into 30 degrees. We'll do that when we turn on final. Right, let's go 30 degrees now.
feeling like there's a bit of a crosswind going on. Way one five. Actually, that elevation is not right. It's about two hundred, not four hundred. Nope. I was hoping we can vacate there, but we'll stop here and hit the parking brake. And that should do it. Nice. Well, that was a very interesting one. Quite a long one, that one. That approach down into that valley, though, was absolutely superb. I need to come back here. I need to land another plane. That was gorgeous. Get the right time of day and the weather, and that will be an amazing approach. So that was from LQMO to LDDU. And uh, that took us, was that fifth? No, how long did that say? 33, 33 minutes time of flight, which is about right. So it, it said it would be about 28, I think it was. So if I have a quick look back at the menu and see where we're at with all this. Come on, Microsoft Flight Sim, get loading. There we go. So this is the Balkans one. There you go. That was a uh, singe to Mostar. And that completes journey five. We have 16 in total, but some of them are much shorter. Like the next one's another half an hour. Then it's 10 minute. And there's a couple of really long ones there. Look, 38 minutes and 40 minutes. Uh, but the longest one is this. Like 14 is nearly an hour. Like What the heck? They have like an hour and then they have a 30 minutes. I might have to try and split those two. Combine them together into two videos or something. Because I don't want to do one hour video and then a 10 minute video. That's just nuts. But anyway, if you're enjoying the series, give me a thumbs up. Until the next one, take care guys. Happy flying.